Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. Ooh, lovely stuff, right? The Athanasian Creed. We should really confess that on a weekly basis. Wouldn't you all agree? Wouldn't you come back every single Sunday to confess it? Ah, oh, well, you should. Repent. Um, both. You should repent and repent of not wanting to confess. It's fun times. But we really think this. This is anti-Lutheran, isn't it? That we go to heaven because we've done good and go to hell because we've done bad? I mean, really. How could we all, uh, you know, measure up with this? Have you all done good that you should bear eternal life with Christ, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in heaven? Of course. Thank you, sir. You're right. We have not. <laughs> We haven't. I mean, when you think about it, we've done a bang-up job. I know I have it at living the sinful life. But when you think about doing good, wouldn't it be great to kind of like have a do-over? To just start again, you know? I really wish the DeLorean would pull up. Everyone know what that is? The DeLorean, you know? Back to the future, you know, open up. Doc Brown opens the door and goes, where we're going, we don't need roads. And opens the door and he says, get in, we'll go back to conception. We'll start you over again and you won't make the same mistakes. Ah, you know, if only, man, if I could have a do-over, if I could go back and try again, if I could just hit the reset button, Go back to the beginning, knowing what I know now. It's this thinking that got the law-focused Pharisee Nicodemus in trouble. I mean, think of the Pharisees. They're not really bad guys. They're actually really good guys. Think of what they did. The Israelites have gone into exile so many times. They've been enslaved so many times, and the Pharisees thought, well, if we just live a perfect life in obedience to the law, then God won't punish us again. If we do the right thing well enough, or at least as well as we can, then God won't punish us again. So really, they're good guys. They strive to be perfect, and that's why they didn't like Jesus, because they were afraid that if they follow this guy, God will punish them again. The Pharisee put confidence in their own ability. Y'all aren't like that though, right? Pharisaical in nature, overreacting about the smallest little things. No one else in here does that? Ah. The law, not the gospel, but the law, was the Pharisee's salvation. And that's why Nicodemus responded to Jesus' words saying, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Basically, can I start again? That's the reaction of sinful man. To be saved, we need to get it right. At least, least Nicodemus and others thought so. If I can just get the law right, be as good as I can be, mess up a little bit, or mess up less, then God will smile upon me. If I could get a do-over, start life again, and get it right this time. What do you think about that? Especially y'all who have gone through life and made your mistakes, and now you either terrified of them or you justified them. Have you ever said, you know, I've made my mistakes in life, but my mistakes got me to where I am today? Isn't that the dumbest thing in the world to say? I mean, really, it is. Because you shouldn't be joyous that you've sinned and <laughs> made mistakes, you know? But that's what we say is our mistakes got us to where we are today. Wouldn't a duo, a second, or even a twentieth birth be great? Wouldn't it be great to not make the same mistake? You know what? <laughs> You'd make the same mistakes no matter how many do-overs you got. You'd mess up again or even worse than the time before. That's how it goes with us and the law. 
We can say, if only, if only, and I'd avoid that temptation. I'd do the right thing. I'd know the sin. I'd mark and avoid it. Well, every time we're forgiven, right, we're, we're sent back out into the world again. We're reborn on Sunday morning in Jesus. And what, what do we do each and every week? <laughs> we die again. We fail again. We sin again. And we're worse than we were before because now we, we know better, right? Do you ever yell at a two-month-old for sticking a fork into an outlet? You may go and smack their little hand, but you're not going to get really mad at them. Why? Because they're what? They're like a two-month-old. You don't get mad at a two-month-old. But a 32-year-old sticking a fork into an owl. You can just call him dumb to his face. Because that's what he is. And you can get mad at him all day long. We know what's right. We know what's wrong. And yet we continue to sin. If left to our own devices, our do-overs, we fall short and mess up the story of our salvation. But as Luther said, the subject of this gospel lesson is the birth of the Spirit and the putting aside of the law, especially in matters of our salvation. For Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't say, you get to start over and try again. Let's see how you do this time. No, for he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. You and I can't survive under the wrath of God by striving to live perfectly under the law. We can't place even a smidgen of trust in our ability to get it right. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus and to us, you can't keep it going. You don't need a reset. You must die and have a new birth. To live forever, you must be born from heaven. You can't reset your mind, heart, and will. No, the Holy Spirit must create in you a new heart, mind, and will that receives and trusts in the gracious will of the Father in the mercy of Jesus Christ our Lord. For as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in Him may have eternal life. You and I don't need a do-over, but rather we must receive the unchanging will of God. That is the reality that the Father sent His Son to die for us that we may live. And that gift of eternal life is given to us solely and alone by the Holy Spirit. No matter how many chances we get, we're going to mess it up time and time again. What matters isn't the chances we get at being perfect, but rather the concrete reality that Jesus got it right and paid the price for our failed attempts and our wicked inclinations. As Luther said, none of us can get rid of such wounds and deadly poison unless he gazes upon Christ upon whom God has cast the sins of us all. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. This is what it means to do good, to trust in Jesus who is the one who is good for our salvation, to trust in His work, His mercy. So we confess in the Athanasian Creed. Why do we confess this? Because we confess that it is not by our work, but by the work of our triune God, that we are saved and have life forever in heaven. My friends, today as with every day, is all about Jesus for you. Your gracious Father who created you does not abandon you in sin and failure, but sends His beloved Son to do the work you and I fail and refuse to do. The Son of God, our Lord Jesus the Christ, willingly and mercifully walked obedient to His Father's law and word for us. And at the appointed time assumed our sin and claimed responsibility for our actions. And in our stead died on the cross, becoming the cursed one that you and I may be saved. In great compassion, this atonement is proclaimed. Jesus sends the Holy Spirit that you may have absolute trust, not in your work, 
but in Jesus' word for your forgiveness. The Holy Spirit preaches one thing, that Jesus Christ is your salvation. Let go then of any justifications except for Jesus who justifies your presence before his Father in heaven. Why and how does Jesus do this? Because Jesus died for you and credits you his righteousness. This is the Holy Spirit's sermon. Jesus is your righteousness. There's no do-over needed, no if-onlys. Jesus is your salvation, your justification, your advocate before the Father, your rescuer who delivers you to paradise. And the Holy Spirit does His job well. He brings Jesus to you in the means of water, bread, and wine, all combined with Jesus' Word, that you may be forgiven and trust in the grace of your Father, in the mercy of Jesus Christ our Lord. So take heart, my friends. No reset button needed. For your Savior makes no mistakes. He changes nothing. He always gets it right. And you are blessed and saved forever in the death and resurrection of your Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We rise and sing.